First of all, what are we doing? We're making a smash single malt and single hop IPA. I have some friends who are potentially gonna be in town next week and they're gonna stay at my office. So I wanna have some beer here. We're like almost completely out of beer right now. I need beer like fast. So I have seven days from now until folks might be here. Generally, that's just enough time maybe to, to do like one batch of beer. I'm gonna be using this crazy Norwegian yeast, Kvike yeast, which ferments at super high temperatures and thus ferments extremely fast. I'm gonna do two batches of beer and I'm not gonna do them at the same time, I'm gonna do them back to back. I should have enough time to do both batches of beer. And the crazy part is I'm gonna ferment in the kettle and then once I'm done with that beer, I will keg it and we'll pitch another batch of beer on the slurry in the kettle, ferment it in the kettle as well. We're using uh, two row Pilsner from Riverbend Malts here uh, in the Asheville area. You can use whatever kind of grain you want. Shooting for 11 pounds of grain. Did I tear this? I think I did. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna dump this everywhere. Oh no, dude. <laughs> no! Oh, Christ almighty. Oh, that's how it's done right there. If you're not making messes, then you're not brewing beer. Next on the agenda, water chemistry. Emmett, what's the key point on the water chemistry? Chloride is higher than the sulfates. Two to one. I'm just gonna crush that up. All right, I'm anticipating that this, the pH is not gonna be low enough. So I'm gonna add like about three milliliters of citric acid, lactic acid. So we're mashing in 159 degrees. Ooh. Oh yeah. We're like maybe 10 minutes in. Test the pH. Okay, so we overshot a little bit. We're, we're at 5.15. That's a little, little lower than I was shooting for, but whatever. I'm gonna be as lazy as possible and do what is uh, informally known as the quick and dirty beer. I'm gonna only mash this for 25 minutes, maybe 30, and I am going to only boil for 30 minutes. If I got like 10 minutes left in the uh, masher, I'm gonna clean some things up. Let me know in the comments what you think about my sweatpants. You don't go out looking for a job dressed like that, do you? On a weekday? Is this a, what day is this? I'm going to stop this mash, we're done. Dunzo, Washington. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank this up to a boil. We're gonna just set it to manual 100% of power and it should start boiling here. In the meantime, I'm gonna take the grains out. I'm gonna attempt to do this on my own. Some people brew alone, and you know, this would be a good uh, benchmark for whether or not someone could do this on their own. I'm just gonna kinda do it slowly, just to like let the water drain. If you do it slowly, it's totally doable. I'm gonna take this, or these here grains out. I've been draining for quite a while. All right, that's just to tell me that we've reached our boil. So that means it's time to throw these hops in. 
we're using a Zaka hops, which I meant to print information out for so I could talk about the hops. See if I can do it from memory. That's a dwarf hop, fairly high alpha acids, 12.1%. Citrusy, uh, orchard fruits, some mango and tangerine, hint of pine needles in there apparently as well. Um, despite the fact that it's a very high alpha acid hop, it's got some uh, nice aromatic qualities. And again, it's a dwarf hop. Dwarf hop, not a midget hop. We're PC around here, it's dwarf hop. <laughs> it's little people. You got that? So we need an ounce of this stuff. I'm gonna pop the lid back on here, I'm just gonna leave it cracked. We'll uh, boil this for 30 minutes. So I think our next addition is at uh, Whirlpool. Cooling water is not on yet. I'm, I am recirculating to the chiller, but I'm not gonna be chilling anything. I just want this boiling wort to circulate through the chiller and sterilize it. We ran the wort through the pump and the plate chiller for 10 minutes. Our timer just went off, so the boil is done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn my heat off, which I just did here, and I'm gonna turn my cooling water uh, supply to the chiller on. So I'm gonna chill this down to 170, and then I'll add my hops for the Whirlpool, except I'm not gonna hang out and wait around for a Whirlpool. I'm actually just going to let it continue to chill down to the yeast pitching temp. All right, we need four ounces of the Zaka, according to my notes here. And uh, which, by the way, Emmett so graciously compiled for me. Thanks, Emmett. This, this beer happened in a large part due to his efforts. So comment uh, below and say, thanks, Emmett, if you like this video, or just hit the like button. Wait, what? Oh, shit. Oh, we, we completely, Dang it, dang it, dang it. We, 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 we're not even close. F ah! Okay, here's what happened. We, we're not paying attention to the thermometer here. We literally chilled this thing down to 92 degrees. 92 effing degrees. We completely missed 170. So now what do we do? We've completely like messed up our hop schedule. I'm just gonna add these hops here. Four ounces of Azaka. All right. What we're gonna do is, basically I think what we'll, I'll do is this. Hmm, here's the final plan. What about that plan? New plan. Ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. No, here's what I'm gonna do. Let's do that, all right, all right. Actually, I can believe I did that. Final plan, I'm actually gonna chill this down to 75. I'm gonna pitch the yeast because it's roughly 70, 75 in here. I'm gonna raise it up to 105. Once it gets to 105, we'll pull the hops and we'll be done. So I got this uh, Omega yeast. Shake it for 30 seconds. After you're done shaking it, you should clean it. And some star sand. Um, here's how I'm gonna aerate. I'm gonna hook my hose back up here. I'm gonna put this lid on. I'm going to turn the pump back on. Run it through here. If I run this through here, while I'm heating back up to my fermentation temp of, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do 105. Once we get to 105, um, we'll wrap this up. Okay, cool. Oh, shit. oh God. <laughs> well, we called this one. <laughs> I don't even know what to do at this point. Let's turn that back on. Pro tip, I don't know, what's the pro tip on this one? Uh, don't do that, do not do that. Uh, so we've done our gravity sample, 1056. This is back up to 105. If you take a look in here, you can tell this is aerated. These hops have been in here for 20 minutes here while we are doing various things. I'm gonna pull the hops out. All right. All I'm gonna do is pop this guy in here. This pot is um, has star sand in it. This will just basically create an airlock, assuming this lid is locked down tight. This thing's locked down. Um, it's, uh, 
set to 105, which is where it's gonna be for the next two or three days, and then we'll be done. All right, it's been two days since I last uh, was on camera here. 24 hours into the fermentation, I measured gravity. It had dropped to about like 1047-ish, starting from 1056. Nowhere near where I thought it would drop. Uh, now 48 hours in, it's only at 1031. I made a mistake. Um, I assumed that all Kvike yeasts fermented super fast at high temperatures. I did some research and discovered on the Omega yeast website, the Voss is the only yeast that they list as having a super fast fermentation time um, at higher temperatures. I'm gonna pitch this. I'm gonna end up with the weird beer now with two different types of yeast in them. Normally I wouldn't open up a fermenter like midway through and do anything like this, but it's just like, this is what I have to do basically to get these batches of beer done. Alrighty. So I'm gonna dump this in. And I'm positive that I will come in tomorrow and this will, will, will be done by this point in the day. Next day, and I've just taken a gravity uh, sample from the kettle. Well, I'll let it cool down. It's down to some 70 some degrees here. We are sitting at 1013. It's got a little bit more to go. Though at this point, I'm gonna pull it out of the kettle. I'm gonna put it in the um, bucket here and let it finish out. Okay, I just closed the bucket, uh, but I do have an issue here, which is that I lost probably like three quarters of a gallon due to, I'm guessing, evaporation. I either boiled too long and lost more liquid than I thought I was gonna lose, or we didn't add enough water to begin with, or a lot just evaporated out of the kettle while it was fermenting. It's looking like I lost almost an entire gallon due to evaporation, so lesson learned. Okay, cheers. Yeah, man. To beers. beers. Smells good, fruity. It smells real fruity. It's got like a really rich aroma. Melony? I'd go with melony. You, you think melony? I'm getting more of like the, um, like more Tropical acidic fruits. Mm -hmm. I can see Like that. mango, pineapple type stuff. Good. Definitely, yeah, citrusy is definitely the, yeah. the proper word. Yeah, I'm not very good at smells, tastes. Yeah. Good at getting drunk. Good at drinking beer. This actually tastes pretty good. So this beer is a miracle of God for several reasons. Here's what it tasted like a couple weeks ago. It tasted, to me it had like a real milky taste. Initially, you know? And then it had more of like a buttery, butterscotch flavor. And then later, this is the, over time, it had literally like a rancid flavor. So I'm looking this up online, figuring out, trying to figure out what is going on with this beer. And those are all flavor descriptors for one defect, which is uh, diacetyl, which is, I mean, it's just an off uh, flavor, a defect in, in beer that you end up with if you do like a number of things incorrectly, which I did all of the things incorrectly. It's caused by a chemical compound called acetolactate. That is just made as a natural byproduct of fermentation uh, given certain circumstances. Like one, high fermentation temperature, low aeration, low pitching rates. And then what happens is over time, that turns into diacetyl. And then, over, given more time, the yeast actually eat that diacetyl, break it down somehow, I don't know how it happens, and it just dissipates. How long has it been sitting since that first taste? This is a month. It's been in the keg for a month. This is a month old, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely gone. Yeah, I mean, I would, I mean, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. A little, little bit of, like, a little slickness, that's what I get from it. Right, but right. And to me, it's not offensive by any means. Yeah. I, I, I would drink that. Not Like, if someone, if I even bought that at a, 
a brewery and so I wouldn't yeah complain about it by any means and for me like there's still a little hint of whatever I was perceiving before yeah. going on at the and, very it's, to me it's at the, the very end yeah the back of my tongue right it's way better there's still a hint of that so um three-day IPA fail it was a three-day IPA that turned into a four-week IPA yeah, exactly <laughs> four four-week IPA success success <laughs> I would just say, if you want to do a three-day IPA, watch the second or the third video in this series here, because we, uh, I've, I worked it out. I figured, okay. yeah. I'll we'll have to watch that. Watch that. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cheers to be Yeah, man. This is good. Yeah. Thanks. Surprisingly. Yeah. Had zero hopes. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for watching. Cheers. Yeah.